Yo, what's up? What's up? Good evening, good evening, good evening. And welcome. Getting ready to get some friends tagged here right quick. Pastor Dixon in the house. Facebook Live with the pastor. I'm going to put on a little background music right quick. Uh, I'm not going to do a lot of talking. Listen, folks, this is a new release that uh, has just been done. And I got a little piece on it myself. You'll hear me. Um given a little extra into it. So uh, please give a listen. It's called uh, The Survivor. Okay. Let me see if I can get it started. Okay. Excuse me while I get some folks tagged up. Okay. And just check out the new release. Let me know what you think. Call the survivor, y'all. You've overcome so much, and you never quit. You're the survivor. There's no way else to say it. It's actually about cancer survivors, but we take a different twist at the end of it. And I'll get started when this is off. So give a listen. Let me know what you think about it. I'll be chiming in as soon as this goes off. Still tagging. So what say ye about other systems? For 400 years in America, my people, black people, have been under attack. But we survived. We survived lynchings, torture, and rape. We survived traffic stops and bad cops. I'm gonna get back up and just pray. We survived chain gangs and street gangs, and we still ain't seen no freedom rate. We've been castrated, emasculated, undereducated, over-incarcerated, and hated for no reason. And we survived. I'm gonna get back up and just pray. So what say we about other systems? We as a people cannot afford to focus only on surviving cancer. We must also focus on surviving an entire health care system that is failed an educational system that has failed our children, a police system and a prison system that targets black and brown people, and an economic system that has robbed us for 400 years ever since our ancestors were forcibly taken from the motherland. No matter what the challenge, no matter how cruel the treatment or how hard the fight, we not only have survived, we will survive. You are the survivor. What up, doe? What up? Good to see everybody. Yeah, you are the survivor. 
It's a new release just come out. I don't know if y'all recognize that voice on the end, but that's a little, little bit of me. A little bit of me interjecting. Nephew, what's going on, man? It seems like we were just together last night. <laughs> Thank you, man, for all of your encouragement and everything. I appreciate you, Brandon. Dr. Bell, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for continuing to have a big voice for the underserved of our community. Yes, sir. We are stronger and better because of you, for sure. My brother, Johnny Cadero in the house, Democratic Black Caucus of South Carolina chair, moving forward here in um, Charleston County, for sure. It's time for real systemic change within the Democratic community that's going to ultimately affect what goes on around and outside of the Democratic Party community. I'm going to say it, no more clicks. <laughs> For sure, the day is over. Pam, how you doing? Pamela, good to see you. Brandon, what's going on, my brother? Yeah, Caroline, how you doing? All righty, all righty. <laughs> Brandon, you say, hmm. <laughs> You are a survivor, that's for sure. Elizabeth Ann, good to see you. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, please be nice. <laughs> Evangelist Michelle, what's going on? Lucas, what's happening? Good to see you. DJ Cass in the house, my brother, my brother. Michelle, good to see you. All righty. Jeremy, how are you, sir? Hate that I missed you the other day. Um, we will do we will do that again, okay? Because I'm definitely looking forward to uh, being introduced to the little one. That's for sure. Uh, Siobhan, what's going on? Good to see you. Sue, Sue, my heart be still. I hope you and Poppy are well, and um, definitely uh, get send my love to the family. All right. Yes, on the check in, Cass. What up, <laughs> Missy Rhodes? What's going on? All right, all right. Yeah, Francis Baylot, what's happening, brother? All right, and you stay on the scene, and I really appreciate that. You know I like folks to be out and about, be out there in the, with the community for sure. Miss Scott, Jackie Scott, what's going on? Uh, Bernard Brown, all right, all right. Now, Pastor, what's going on? Good to see you. Good to see you, my brother. I hope you're keeping me in prayer. Vermeil, good to see you. Lord B, Brother Law, <laughs> Tim Bro, what's up, Brother Law? What's going on? Gino Jones, man, Chi-Town, Southside in the house. Good to see you, my brother, for sure. Gene, how are you doing? Yeah, this is going to be a, um, uh, a good evening here. Uh, some information is going to be put forth here this evening, Some, which, a lot of which is going to be, and I'll just put it out here, my opinion, okay? You have your opinions, I have mine. I'm just going to share mine in this forum right here, okay? Yes, yeah, so you say we are well. Excellent. I know, I know, Berkeley County Dems, war, rocking it at home, for sure, <laughs> so, Eli, the future, what's going on, brother, how you doing? It's good to see you, let me see if I can prop this thing up a little bit, okay, so we can get on into this thing tonight, all right, all right, all right, I know I saw Dr. Dr. Bell on here a little while ago, so I'm gonna make sure that I touch on coronavirus tonight. But also, we're going to move from coronavirus right on into the um, runoff elections that are happening next week. And then we're going to circle back around and we're going to talk about John C. Yeah, Calhoun. Yeah, we're going to talk about him, too. Um, maybe even, even that Confederate battle flag, <laughs> you know. Uh, we, it'll be all right. Donna, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Let's see. We're looking at uh, 836 right now. Yeah. So... Uh, that's a new release, okay? Um, premiered on Facebook Live with the pastor. Uh, I had a little little spot at the end there, you know, where even though the entire theme of the, the, the piece is about um, cancer and cancer survivors, and it's a serious message, but um, the producers wanted to sort of took that survivor, take that survivor theme, they wanted to take it and to, to shift it a bit to the survival of us as a people, it's been particular black people uh, and the struggle that we've been in. So I was contacted, uh, shout out to Sean Doby. Thank you so much once again. Thank you for the unity piece that you and, and, and Lisa and all of the rest uh, put together. Um, uh, Link Capone and Reddy Red and, and Sheree um, put, up, put together for the campaign. Man, y'all just rocking it. And, and I appreciate you so much for sure. So for all of y'all, you get a chance, please make sure you check on, um, check the uh, the sound. I'm going to post it up on the page in a little, in a little while. 
<laughs> yeah, Gino Southside, all the way. Low end for life, bro, for sure. Dion Tedder, what's going on? Candidate for House District number 109. Shakima, good to see you. Thank you for the call earlier today. I appreciate that. It's always good to hear from you. Yes, I'm rocking Jesse Williams, straight out, uncut, uncut, <laughs> the real deal. Yeah, Ron Rico, what's going on? How you doing, brother? What's happening? All right, good to see you. Lex, what's happening? All right, all right. Malcolm, what's going on? Yes, yes, yes. So um, let's kick it off. Like I said, you know, shout out to Dr. Bell in the house. But no matter who says what, no matter what we see out here, I know last night we had a few hundred people at Mother Emmanuel. And um, no matter which way you try to spin it, in crowds like that, you cannot social distance, okay? But I'm going to continue to put it out. It is time to to make sure, as, as things have laxed, you know, and the guards have been dropped, that you personally understand your obligation to yourself and to your family to continue practicing social distancing. Continue wearing your mask anytime that you're out in public, wear your mask. Um, Make sure that you're washing your hands frequently. And for those who can, I still urge you, stay at home. Ain't nothing wrong with staying at home. You know, I, I've, I've learned so much in these last few months uh, about what I've missed. Just always being on the go. Just always being on the go. Yeah, Dion, it was a great turnout last night for sure. And um, we tried our best. Um, I, I don't know for you all that might not know. We had our... Um, um, Remembrance for Mother Emanuel. Uh, for the last four years, M Mother Emanuel tragedy was five years ago. And every year since that, for the last four, uh, four years since 2015, we've met. Though, And when I say we, I'm talking about those who were out there in the streets that night, uh, most of whom never got any kind of recognition for the work, uh, especially as um, the... Um, the uh, narrative that was given out was that, you know, Charleston didn't explode because of the good people here. Well, that might be a part of it, but the reality was there were some people on the ground who put in work that night to keep Charleston from exploding. And North Charleston after Walter Scott, good people who put in work in order to um, try to bring a better outcome for our city and it, it, and it worked. But those same people never really got recognition. So every year, those same people that put in that work, we gather at Mother Emanuel each year. And yesterday we had, somebody estimated 300, somebody said 400 people out at Mother Emanuel who heard the backstory, the story that you don't see in the, in the presentations and all of that, but the real story, okay? And uh, that's a good thing because none of us that were there that night have sought any kind of recognition for what we did. We just let the narrative roll. Y'all want to, y'all want to, y'all want to develop that narrative. Go right ahead. You know, you can say Joe Riley did all you want, but when's the last time black folk listened to Joe Riley? Drop that right there. Okay, I'm gonna drop that right there. But the bottom line is, coronavirus is still out here and prevalent, and the cases are on the increase. Uh, dramatically, and South Carolina is one of those states where the cases are on the increase. Fortunately, as far as the reported death toll, and uh, I can't keep up with everybody and then talk to, so what's up? What's up, everybody? The reported death toll right now in South Carolina is at 621. And I say the reported because, and I've put this out since March 14th when I first talking about started talking about COVID, uh, and um, putting out warnings about COVID. Um, since then, I do believe that we haven't really gotten an, an accurate picture or been given an accurate, accurate picture of the death toll that has actually happened in South Carolina. But it is what it is. Whether it's an accurate death toll or not, protect yourself. Self-protection. Don't wait for the government to tell you anything or do anything for you. Protect yourself. Take this thing seriously. And I still see a lot of people who are out in public who are taking this seriously. And I, I'm, I'm so happy. I am so happy, you know. Now, folks will see the videos from last night and say, well, Pastor Dixon, you took your mask off. Yep, there's times when you will see me put myself on the line in order to make sure that the message is brought forth about saving people, about taking care of people. I, my life is not that important to me even though I want to live a long life, 
but there are times when a message of unity and peace has got to supersede, supersede my own emotional attachment and even my care and concern for self. Um, anybody that's in really in civil rights, people who are really uh, in the struggle and have that spirit of change on them understands that any time, any given time, we are subject to hurt and harm out in, this, out, in, out in the realm we do. There are people who don't like the truth, don't want the truth, and will kill to prevent from having the truth. So I've been up under that threat for a long time. So last night, in order to make sure that message came through, I had to relax my mask. But you saw I was still separated from the crowd a good little bit, but I put it, put it back on too, okay? All righty. Just want to let y'all know before everybody start talking, because I know folk going to be talking. It's all right. It's all right. Everybody is popping on. I just can't individually um, uh, say hi to everybody. But as you all know, those that have been with me before, after this is over, either tonight or tomorrow, I will come back and I'll greet everybody. Man, I love you all. You all are amazing. And getting to where we're at tonight, I love you all so much that as we are approaching the runoff elections, we have three races right now that have to be decided uh, on Tuesday of next week, the 23rd. That's the runoff election day because nobody had a large enough vote margin in order to actually win the election um, on, on the, in the primary uh, last week. So we get to do it again in South Carolina House District number 109, which I saw Dion Tedder on tonight. Uh, in South Carolina, House District 115, Dion is one of the candidates for House District 109, uh, um, House District 115, and also in Charleston County Council, District number three. Those three in our area have got runoff elections that have got to be decided this week. The winner of this runoff, for those who don't really understand the system, the winner of this runoff will be the one who runs against the Republican opponent in, no, in, the, in the November general election on November 3rd, okay? So, y'all, please, we, we do civics education, too, at Facebook Live with the pastor uh, because uh, some lunatics figured it was good to take civics out of the school uh, along with uh, a few other basic things like... Um, <laughs> like uh, the trades and, and all of that. Some, I don't know where those people came from that came up with those brilliant ideas that have failed our community and our children consistently, and they still fight against making that change back, for sure. It's time, folks. It's time to make that change, get people in office who are going to work for you. And one of the ways that we know how pe about people that are going to work for us is not that they show up every uh, every election time or anything like that, but because they have a track record of already working for you. That's one real way of knowing where a person's heart is. We see the frustrations that Democrats have, especially African-American Democrats, who have gone to the polls and have been neglected by the Democratic Party and even their de Democratic elected officials. Sheer frustration, and, and, and that resulted in many of our younger Democrats saying, why should I even vote? Why should I be a part of that? Nothing ever happens. We elect these people and they don't do anything for us. Well, one of the reasons is you have primarily, we have primarily selected people who have no track record of actually working for the community before running for office. People who have developed a platform, many of them online or whatever means, many of them taking a platform from somebody else, parroting it back. And the people say, yeah, that sounds good. Well, sounding good and getting your community taken care of, that's two different things. And it's crazy to keep having people running for office and us, so, uh, us voting for those people who really haven't shown that they care for our community, haven't demonstrated that care. So in District 115, and I'm going to talk about my picks tonight, specifically my picks in these races, okay? Uh, I ain't asking nobody to, to like them. If you don't happen to like the person that I'm talking about, then please don't comment nasty on here. Just take it over to your page, okay? And just say, I disagree with Pastor Dixon and, and blah, blah, blah. Take it over there, you know? It's all right. It's all right. Respect my page the way I respect your page, you know? But these are my selections. 
And uh, this is not about debate. This is just my selections. If anybody else might agree, then well and good. If you don't, well and good. <laughs> that's what this world is built on. And that's why we have so much chaos today, because one person feels that you have to believe like they do. I don't believe that way. You, to you be your way and to me be mine. And in the race for South Carolina House District, where you have Carol Temple, who is running against a young woman by the name of Spencer Wetmore, my selection for House District 115 is unequivocally Carol Temple. Why? Well, Carol, I met Carol on the social justice field out here fighting. She's an educator and former principal. She's a scientist. She's been a small business owner. She is a person who, you know, people like to say they see me all the time out here doing whatever. Everywhere I've been, Carol's been. This red scarf that I have right here, this scarf I got in at the South Carolina State House, right, in 2014. There was a rally there where we were addressing Medicaid expansion, quality public education, and voter rights. And guess who got the same scarf at their house and that they wear periodically? Carol Temple, because she was right there. Carol Temple's been inside of our school board fighting for our quality public education. She's a board member with the Quality Education Project. As, as a scientist, her focus on the environment is with, without question, preserving the, the, the environment. She's been out on strike lines with the fight for 15. That's right. <laughs> with that chant, we can't survive without seven, we can't survive at 725. Chanting, pre-dawn. She's been up in MUSC boardroom fighting for workers' rights at MUSC. You see, it's those kind of things that weigh heavily as far as my decisions to support people. She's been out fighting for gun legislation that will end the killings, not only in mass shootings, but in the hood, because she gets it. She gets it. Her opponent it's, might be a nice lady. I think she was the... Um, uh, city administrator for one of the, the cities where this district, House 15, is uh, James Island, Folly Beach, Kiowa, Seabrook, and parts of Johns Island. Um, and I think she was city administrator for one of those or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but I don't know her. I, I don't know her. I'm sure she's a nice person. Uh, but I just feel that if, you know, she really felt that she has this, 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 this a concern for the community, then it would show in actions. Google her name, Spencer Wetmore, and you don't really come up with the diversity of things that Carol has had her hand in as she's continuously been out here striving for the good of the people. So in this race, I, I you know, if I could, if I could, Say, I don't know, I would do that. But in this race, there's just, to me, there's, there's no, there's a, there's a, there's a, if I say they're okay, that's a false equivalency because Carol, by, by just sheer weight of the volume of her work, outweighs whatever I can come up with on Miss Wetmore. I wish her well. I think she's going to probably have a very bright community, I mean, a bright future and career in politics. My suggestion would be, don't wait till it's campaign time to get out here with the community. There's always something going on. It's like all these people out here that's jumping up Black Lives Matter. Well, shoot, Black Lives Matter been mattering a long time. A long time. And I ain't, a lot of these folks, they ain't been jumping up. Now they jumping up. I'm happy to see them, you know. But it's those that's been in the struggle that really, really are the ones that, that carry the most weight, you know. So in this race... The race for South Carolina House District number 115, the Democratic candidate that I personally support is Carol Temple. Okay, let there be no doubt about that. I support Carol Temple for this race, District 115. In the race for Charleston County Council, District 3, we have Jesse Williams that's running, and we have Rob Werman, 
who's running. Rob is a public defender. Um, he works with the uh, with the public defenders of Charleston County Public Defender's Office, I do believe. Um, and um, uh, he he has a a good a great conversation, and, and it looks like a great platform and everything. But with the same thing as Miss Wet, Wetmore in District One Fifteen, I don't know Rob. I haven't seen Rob out here in the community fighting to get people paid wages and 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 talking about affordable health care or, or or ending gun violence or 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 fighting for our schools but guess who i have seen who's running in the race for charleston county district three i've seen jesse williams i've seen jesse williams donating his time every month down on the whalen well actually on dorchester terrace to help children down there to have a, 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 bright, a brighter Saturday, educating them, feeding them while he was there. I've seen Jesse fight for Garrett High School in order to keep it up. I've seen him inside of the school boards championing the causes of our kids and not allowing privatization to creep in not afraid to speak to a school board that's neglected black and brown children and poor children consistently. I've seen him fighting the fight. I've seen him out on the strike line with a fight for 15 sign at seven o'clock in the morning at Burger King before the sun came up. I've seen him. I've seen him fighting again to end gun violence out here, standing on the front lines with with parents against gun violence and, and with Brady campaign and with moms demand action. I've seen him. Rob Werman. I don't go to court a lot with folks, but I may, that's his area of performance at, but you're running for, he's running for an office to represent a whole lot of people, a whole lot of people. I've seen Jesse out here fighting against the 526 uh, e expansion, educating the communities over there, Russelldale, Ferndale, all of those communities, educating them on what's in store for them, which is nothing. They're going to lose everything if the 526 expansion does go through. The I-26, 526 expansion. I've seen Jesse. No, I've seen Jesse because Jesse cares. He cares about his community. And that's why he's out here on the streets every day. Like I said, never taking money for what he does. And he's out there with those kids, you know, at least once, maybe twice a month, every month. I met him eight or nine, eight, about eight years ago. And I know he started doing that outreach down there in 2007. Don't get paid for what he do. You know, don't get grant money and all that stuff because he cares, because he cares. Let me back up right quick. So I'm going to back up in a minute. I wish that I had more to say about Rob Werman. I don't really know him that well, but I think he's a really nice guy. And once again, I, 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 I hope that, that he has an amazing future ahead of him uh, as far as politics. But right now, in this dispensation of time, we, we need a troop. We need a trooper in Charleston County. Somebody who's going to address trans, uh, transportation. Somebody who's going to address infrastructure. Somebody's going to address education, economics. All of the areas where Jesse has been working at already. You know, some might look to Mr. Werman and say, well, you know, he's maybe more articulate than Jesse, or maybe because he is a public defender and he's an attorney and all of this. But let me just tell you something. I'd rather have somebody in office that I know that's going to fight for me and be honest about it than somebody that's well-educated and hasn't shown me that that's what they're going to do. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not meaning to offend anyone. Like I said, I think that um, Mr. Werman is going to make an uh, amazing politician. But in this dispensation of time right now, 
Right now, we need some warriors on the front line. Warriors, okay, for sure. So when it comes to Charleston County District 3, Charleston County Council District 3, my choice unequivocally is Jesse Williams. It's Jesse Williams. So please pass the word on if you agree. If you don't, that's well and good too. It's not, it's not a debate or anything. It's my opinion. I'm just telling you why I believe that. So let me back up and say some highs to some folks right quick, okay? I got a lot of folks on here. Wow. Okay. All righty. Let's see. Walter Burrow ch uh, chiming in for show. Oh, okay. All righty. Oh, wow. Okay. All righty. Let me see. Where we at? Okay. Kevin Holland said, good seeing you, Kevin. How you doing, brother? All righty. Good to see you. DJ D Nice in the house. Thank you for tuning in, brother. Um, Professor Damon Ford, my good friend Damon, how you doing? Amy, how are you? Bonnie, good evening. Latoya, good evening. Luciano, my friend, good to see you. Tammy, good to see you. Yes, Antoine, yes, man. Thank you for rolling out yesterday, man. You, you have always repped with the people, though. You know, I, you know I know who rep with the people and who don't, for sure. I appreciate you, brother. Amy, once again, all righty. Azalee, good evening. All right. Miss B, what's going on? How you doing? Lisa, what's happening? And I just played the uh, the uh, new tune, Survivor, uh, opening up today. I'll probably try to hit it off again before we close down tonight. Um, Alexis, how you doing? Ramona, good evening. Laurie, what's happening? All righty. Good to see you. Michelle, thank you. Well, you've been right on top of it, too. Everywhere. Keep up that great work. It's grinding like that that's going to change things. We just, we just, we just got to keep the numbers up for sure. Keep that enthusiasm up, that energy. Regina, what's going on? Destiny Cafe in the house for sure. Yes, Cheryl, all the way, all the way. Okay, Jackie, again, Carmen, good to see you. Kiwi, what's happening? Yes, the voice of Colleton in the house for sure, for sure. All righty, let's see. Zach Vapa. <laughs> What's happening, my brother? How's it going? Doing all right. Good to see you. All righty. Jermaine, uh, Amanda, Aaron, um, Chance LeBron in the house. Good to see you, Chance. It's been a while. Have to get up your way sometime soon. Stacy, Judy, John Brazzini. Good to see you, my friend. Peter, uh, what's happening? Corey. All right. Great conversation today. Thank you, sir. Nancy, uh, Sandy. All righty. Good to see you also. Carolyn, good to see you also. Boy, you were you, from the beginning, from the beginning. Yep. As soon as I came home, seemed like we started working, trying to change things. That's it. Lee, good to see you. Lee, I will call you tomorrow, okay? We definitely need to chat. All righty. Yeah. Okay. Nina, Nina Cano, how are you? Good to see you. Amanda, Sydney, what's going on? How you doing? Good to see you. No, you right on time. You all good. Only thing I talked about so far was the fact was I didn't I didn't even talk about coronavirus, did I? No, I didn't. Maybe I'll fill it in at the end. I just jumped on right into this election. I've been talking about the um the upcoming uh runoff elections on Tuesday and uh my support for in House District number 115, I support Carol Temple. And in Charleston County uh, Council District 3, I'm supporting Jesse Williams. Uh, let there be no doubt about it. Um, so we need to get out and turn up and turn out for those uh, candidates, for those who su would support them. OK, I don't I don't expect anybody to agree with me. I'm not trying to convince you to agree with me. You make up your own decisions. OK, which leads when we talk about decisions, it, it, we get to this last race. This is the race for House, South Carolina House District number 109, okay? And I intentionally held this conversation off until right now, um, uh, after the other three. It's not, it wasn't in numerical order, in other words. Um, and I, I held off on it because um, it's, for me, it's a, it's a controversial race, a race in which we have... Uh, a seasoned veteran that many people know here, 
an African-American. His name is Elder James Johnson. And he's running against a relatively newcomer by the name of Dion Tedder, a young fellow, an attorney, and um, someone who has, um, uh, I've been watching a little bit, okay? And I'm going to put this up front, and then I'll back it back from there. My support in this race, race for South Carolina House District number 109, where you have Elder James Johnson, and you have Dion Tedder. And I know I've said in my last two supports about the Warriors out on the field. In this race, I'm breaking that rank and I'm supporting Dion Tedder for House District number 109. Unequivocally, Dion Tedder. But Pastor, you just said, man, they put in work and all of that and, and you just called Dion Tedder a relatively newcomer. Well, there are extenuating circumstances why I had to come to this decision, okay? And it's not a decision that I took lightly, but many of you understand that the work that I do and the heart that I have is for the community. That the decisions that I make are decisions based solely on the betterment of the community. So if there's some reason why I feel that Dion Tedder, the newcomer in this race, deserves my support over someone who you've probably seen advocating for different causes here, there must be a good reason. Now, I don't think I'm going to share that good reason on in this forum, but I will gladly, if anybody would like to inbox me or call me, my number is readily available. I'll tell you exactly why I can't, you know, I can't put my support behind my former partner, Elder James Johnson. It's one thing about folks who see a person sporadically and base an opinion on them. It's a whole entirely thing when you really know somebody. And in this race, I would personally, I personally decided to go with the newcomer. A young newcomer on top of that, that's a plus. Who I do, I do believe he will ultimately do right by our community. I believe that he will operate with the utmost integrity and that the outcome of his sitting in that seat will result in a much better District 109, okay? Coming on the heels of State Representative David Mack, those are some big shoes to fill. But I do believe that it's time for new blood in that seat. This is another aspect of my decision. It's time for new blood in that seat. Young blood with new ideas. Us old folks, we passing away, okay? We are getting older. I'm trying to make sure, I want everybody to understand this. A lot of what I'm doing is pushing younger people ahead. Jesse's a younger person. I'm pushing younger people ahead because we need to begin to set up a structure that is not based on people that are going to die in the near future. Oh, did I say that? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did say that. We need to make sure, though, that we're grooming younger people who are ready to take up the mantle. Now, is Dion ready? I don't believe so. But I have seen him reach out consistently and ask the hard questions, ask for advice, not be too proud to hear a different opinion, and is ready to make changes when the changes make sense. Dion, I know, will do that, okay, because I've seen him. So for those who might have to might question, and I know tomorrow, I know the word is probably going to go out. He just mad because Dixon backed, I mean, because uh, because Johnson backed his opponent in 2019. Uh, I could care less about that. Those two, actually, they spend more time talking about me than I ever spend talking about them. I, 
2019 was 2019. I did not win the mayoral race. So I haven't had time since then. Many of you all have seen me. I have not stopped in my advocacy. People still dying. People still hungry. Kids still failing. Folks still can't get health care. And folks can't get paid right. And our environment is crumbling. I ain't had time to worry about what those other folks doing. But a lot of you know, some of you know, because you've heard it. I don't hear it because they don't come to me with that foolishness. But some of you have heard that it's like I'm running for office right now as much as my name stay in their mouth. I don't get it. I don't get it. While what stays in my mouth is health care for all, education for our children, stopping the gun violence, making sure that people get paid a decent wage, making sure everybody has their own rights preserved, including women's right to choose what happens with their own body. Those are the issues that come out of my mouth. And I don't have time for talking about folks and carrying on. I got some folks that call me regularly and they start the conversation. And I said, wait, that's gossip, man. Come on, let's, let's stop. Let's stop that. Let's back up, okay? So my choice in the race for District 109 is not the one who has the bigger name or the one who you might have seen fighting for social justice. It's the underdog. I'll put it out there. And his name is Dion Tedder because I personally think that his heart is in the right place. His head is in the right place. And he can take us to the next level that we really need to go without any strings attached. Okay. So, if y'all don't like me, fight me. Y'all be all right. It's tight, but it's right. <laughs> For sure. So, those are my choices. House District number 115, I pick Carol Tet uh, Temple. Charleston County Council District 3, I pick Jesse Williams. South Carolina House District number 109, I pick Dion Tedder, okay? And um, like I said, I'm not going to change, you know, I've thought about this long enough and, it, and it's just time for me to make, the, to make that statement. So I encourage those who might understand where I'm coming from on this thing to get on out to them polls and take other people to the polls because we need a turnout in this runoff election just like we had, actually, even the primary election was mediocre. Folks, we got to do better. We got to do better, folks. I see Kristen Graziano is on. Kristen is running for Charleston County Sheriff against Al Cannon. Kristen Graziano is my candidate also. Al Cannon need to go. You know, He's had his day, you know, for sure. There's a whole lot of these folks that just need to go. You know, And I'm gray myself. But when I look at what's happening around the United States, I see a younger generation that's ready to fight for the causes. Causes that some of these old gray-haired people dropped fighting for a long time ago. These same people who wouldn't join me out in the streets, these young folks out there, they out there. And I've been promoting them for a long time. I think it's really telling. I don't know about y'all, when, when you hear politicians talking right now, and all of a sudden they start talking about the youth this and the youth that and they're doing this and their energy and we got to promote the youth and everything. And the real is, the real is, I ain't heard them talking about no youth involvement for years. I ain't never heard them talking about it. Now all of a sudden the politicians want to put the youth, oh yeah, we for the youth and everything. You should have been for the youth all along promoting them anyway. But instead of doing that, many of them have been, acted as gatekeepers keeping them from moving, telling them what they need to think, not respecting their ideas or their energy. And now when they see that they're changing America, that they're changing the paradigm, now it's like, oh, the youth this and the youth that and the youth this. And it just so happens to be an election year too. It's tight, but it's right. <laughs> I'm telling you, for sure. it's tight, but it's right. <laughs> What's good, Elvin? What's going on, brother? Aaron, what's happening? Charleston Uplift in the house. Danielle, 
Charleston Brady chapter president. That's right. That's a Brady campaign to prevent gun violence. I am one of the board representatives, a, a trustee uh, on the national board where Danielle, she takes care of our Charleston chapter. Um, hit her up. Hit her up. Yeah, you, you, you're right, uh, uh, Aaron. Yeah, pandering. Yeah, fish fries and all that other, other foolishness. And a lot of the young folk ain't falling for that foolishness no more. But I want other people as my age to understand that we've been had, we've been took, hoodwinked, bamboozled, run amok, led astray by a lot of these black politicians that's out here right now in office. Not necessarily right here, okay, just period, period, all the way up to Congress. And we need to stop falling for that foolishness. Like I said, it just bothers me so much that that they will just, they love to put the children out there, the young people out here, you are doing such a great job. And, but they wouldn't promote any of them over the last 10, 12 years or so. I realized a long time ago that I'm getting old. And I also, I guess you'd call it lazy or whatever you want. I also realize that it's time to groom. It's been time to groom those that are going to take over. That's why you always see me supporting young folk. Always, always. And I support the older folks too, as long as they right. If they ain't right, I ain't got no time for it. As long as they're trying to help the community out, I'm down. But as soon as these older gray folks start, start with these games, the political games, pay to play, all these other different mechanisms play, you do for me and I'll do for you. When, as soon as they start that, I got to go. I ain't got no time for that. So as I rind into the last few minutes of this, I want to talk about what happened in Marion Square yesterday. Not what happened from the standpoint of the um, those who defaced the, the statue. Okay, that's between, that's a legal issue. I'm going to stay out of that, okay? Uh, yeah, bamboozle. That, I, I'm gonna stay out of that, let, you know. Um, I don't, you know, y'all know, I don't condone that type of action anyway, activity anyway. But the thing is, though, if the folks that were sitting there, if everybody that attended that event yesterday with the mayor, not the not the event before then, okay, with uh, Representative Gayard and Quajo and them, not that event, but the actual event with the mayor when they announced that the, that the statue was gonna go come down. Or if you watched it live, or you can still go back and watch it, if you really just give a listen to what was said by not only the mayor, but also by Councilman uh, Dudley Gregory and others who spoke, if you really just give a listen, you'll see that they get this whole thing. And they're, they're having a conversation, not only about taking that statue down, which is coming down. Okay, at least I I think it's going to be a bigger fight for him now because of the, the, the you know what happened afterward. It might be a bigger fight getting all of the votes in because now that that riled up that other side's base. But you know, not here. That's neither here nor there. But the the conversation and what was delivered yesterday was not only about taking down that statue, but it was about understanding that that's only a symbolic gesture. Taking that statue down is not going to cure racism at all. It's like the Confederate battle flag. They took the Confederate battle flag down and George Floyd still got killed. Come on, somebody. They took the Confederate battle flag down and over 1,200 African Americans have been killed by law enforcement agents since Walter Scott. It's not going to cure racism. It's purely symbolic. I'm glad to see it's going, though. Old Cal can go ahead. John C., he can just go on about his business, that's for sure. Uh, I do. I, I don't necessarily say tear it up. Put it in a museum so that the people who revere that statue and him and his legacy, whatever, they can go to a museum and pay to get in and go see him. You know, go right ahead. I'm good with that. I believe in African-American museums, too. Yeah, so if you want a Confederate Heritage Museum, go right ahead. Put that old rag, excuse me, that flag. I'm sorry, that was a mis misstatement. Put that flag over there um, in, the, in the museum too. And, and those people who believe that that's heritage for them 
and deny slavery and the hatred aspect, they can go there and see it. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Don't necessarily have to tear up nothing, you know, that's for sure. That's for sure. Because no matter which way it goes, as far as that statue or that flag, what's left over when they're gone, that's racism. And it was mentioned in the conversation by the speakers yesterday, by the mayor and by Councilman Gregory and others that the hard work of uprooting systemic racism, I said that the soil up under that statue is where the roots of racism lie. So once the statue is removed, the roots are still there. And the mayor and the, and the people that they addressed that, they said, yes, we're not going to stop with, and you can go back and look yourself. We're not going to stop with the removal of this, this statue. We need to be fighting for better quality education for our black and our brown community. Public education. We need to be fighting for economic empowerment. Go back and listen to it yourselves. I've done lives before about how we only hear what we want to hear. Go back and listen. About, they understand that economic empowerment is a, is, 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 is a part or the lack thereof is another aspect of systemic racism that has to be cured that has to be dug up. They understand that lack of an education and prison reform. They talked about prison reform. They talked about law enforcement reform. They talked about all the different tentacles and roots that are in the ground that once the statue is removed, once the flag is removed, that those things are still gonna be sitting there until they are addressed and dug up. They talked about addressing those things. But folks missed that. No, 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 no. Take statue down. Take statue down. Take statue down. Calhoun got to go. Calhoun got to go. And at the end of all of that, what, what, what happens? It's like burning down King Street or tearing down King Street. The next day, what did it accomplish? It was venting frustration. I get that. I don't condone that. But the thing is, we always have to look at, at, at what, what, what is accomplished. It, br it brought a highlight to the severity of, of Black Lives Matter and the reality of it and that people are tired. But it wasn't a solution. The people that took the microphone yesterday, for those that listened and heard, heard them talk about solutions and that they weren't going to allow this, the, the subject of the solutions to just fade away that they were going back to chambers and to talk about all of those things in order to make sure that we begin to dismantle not just a statue, but systemic racism. I heard it. The videos are online. And if you want to watch and listen, you'll hear it too. They talked about these things. I think I got a, a video. I'm going to try to chop it up so it's not so long or whatever and, and, and post up the information. Post it so other folks can hear it, you know. Sometimes, you know, it, 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 it's, God, it's God's sense of humor that he gave us two ears and one mouth. And I believe in that. I truly believe in that, you know. Although I understand the expression too. I understand the frustration. I understand where, especially with the younger generation, is saying that we're not being heard. I get it. Because you haven't been. The old fogies like me, gray-haired folks, well, I listen. I listen. Your voice will always be good with me. But some of these old folks, they done, the gatekeepers done locked you down, and I know it. And I get it. I get it. I get it. And it's hard to trust once you've been locked down. I get that, too. So where do we go from here with that? All of the things that they talked about yesterday, including taking the statue down, they didn't say we're not going to. It might be a bigger fight, but it's still going to come down. All of the different aspects of systemic racism that they talked about dismantling, all of those things that they said, now it's on, it's on us to make sure that they do. That's where the problem has been for a long time with the Democratic Party. Instead of us demanding that they follow through on their promises. Same thing with elected officials. 
We give them a pass. Well, folks, the passing days is over. Once they've said it, you got to make it happen. And we got to be there right in their face to make it happen. And I don't mean in their face yelling at them or caring. No, no, no. Be right there saying, you know, I got my three minutes on the microphone. Okay. I heard you say this now. You know, what's happening? Why haven't you followed through on what you said? And when are you going to follow through on what you, what you said? With the statue. It's going for the vote on Tuesday at their regular council meeting. And I hope that they still have the unanimous approval because before going into yesterday, they had unanimous approval that was going to happen on Tuesday. And there are those who are going to say, well, why didn't they just do it already? Those are people that's always just going to, they're not going to be satisfied anyway. So I, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. But on Tuesday, they're going to vote. And they're, hopefully they're going to vote unanimously again to bring the statue down. And at the close of that meeting, they start with procurement, and they're probably already planning it, how, who they're going to hire. I hope that they hire an African-American company to do it. What a great irony that would be, and to take pictures. <laughs> black, folks <laughs> taking, black folks taking Calhoun down, you know. Um, and know this, you can't move the street until we repeal the Heritage Act, which some of our, some of our legislators in the state house are, doing, try, are working at. Okay, no, you cannot just change the name on the street. Sorry. Um, but um, we have the obligation that if we don't see movement within, say, a week or so, that we go back and ask, what's going on? You said it's coming down. When is it coming down? They can't say, well, we got to wait for the approval because they're supposed to do that on, on Tuesday if all goes well. That would be one, one less thing they could say. And even for the rest of those issues, education and economic empowerment and all of that, we need to stay inside of the, count, the city council meetings and make sure that we are keeping them on task. That's our job. And we failed in our job for a long time. We have failed in our job for a long time, holding our, our politicians accountable. And that's why I picked the people that I did pick in this in, in, on the runoff, because I do believe strongly that those are people that who don't mind being held accountable for their position, who are going to ap uh, operate with transparency and integrity. I believe that fully. OK, so, folks. Sometimes we got to just listen. Sometimes we got to just listen and behind the listening, though, we need to have feet. We need to make sure that we are there ensuring that they do what they say they're going to do. Okay? Anything else is just yelling and screaming. And the next day, we back at square one. Let's strategically change the world. Can we do it? There's a, a guy who's a former president with a funny name. He quoted somebody else and he said, yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can do that. We must do that. We must hold, just like Amy said, we must hold the elected officials accountable. All of them. Every last one of them. That's our job. It's one of the reasons why I'm chairing the Democratic Black Caucus of South Carolina, the Charleston County chapter, to hold both the elected politicians accountable, but also holding their party accountable because there's been a lapse of communication between the party and the people, especially people of color. I've been fighting in this fight for a long time, grinding for education and ending gun violence and making sure people get paid and health care and everything. And the, those are the Democratic Party platform points, okay? Every Democrat, I love this, and we fight for that, and we fight for the environment and all of this here. But when I'm out there on the battlefield, they ain't there. Oh, let Pastor Dixon do it. Folks, that dog ain't going to hunt no more. For sure. We don't have option of going Republican, period. I'll tell you all that, you know. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my world, because in my life. 
because the Republicans stand for everything that I don't believe in, and they 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 don't believe in everything that I stand for, and I'm and I, everything, everything, all them things that I talk about, <laughs> they they fight against it. They block legislation against it, and then they smile and go to church, and they got pastors that tell them you're doing a great job, lying to them because the people are suffering. But until we make the Democratic Party right and respect us and respect our vote, then we're going to continue to, to be treated like this. Power concedes nothing without demand. It never has and it never will. And the measure of power that can be exerted against any group is based on how much that group will take. So when we point fingers at the establishment and the the party and all of that, them fingers need to be pointing at us because we've allowed the, 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 the problems to happen. We have not stood up and demanded our rights, our right to fair and equal representation. Anytime you put your name on something, make sure that, you, that, they, that they're representing. So now is the time for that change, okay? It's the time for that change. Um, as I come to a close tonight, um, once again, I did talk about COVID, but I just talk about, talked about getting, uh, pr protecting yourselves. The numbers are real simple. South Carolina, we're up to 621 deaths, 621. And that's been since March 16th. Okay. It hasn't been a long time, 621 dead. Since February 6th in the United States, there's over 118,000, almost 119,000 COVID-related deaths, okay? And this thing is very serious. This thing is, 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 is growing, and it's still, you know, in, in, the, in the aftermath of the protests and everything after George Floyd, after Ahmaud Arbery, after Breonna Taylor, and after the aftermath of opening up the beaches, and you know how we go when they open up Myrtle Beach. We go in the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all up in the club. In the aftermath of all of that, we've had, we've spiked all over South Carolina as far as the cases. Fortunately, the, um, the actual deaths that are reported have not uh, gone up a lot. That's right. Power can seize nothing without demand, Robert. That's, it never has and it never will. Frederick Douglass, a great African statesman or African-American statesman said that. But please protect yourselves against COVID-19. We need everybody. And this thing is continuing to ravage black and brown people more than it is any other culture. Because of what? Other ethnicity. Because of what? Because of them same roots, systemic racism. Because in our communities, we don't have, in our urban communities, we, we're packed on top of each other. We don't have access to quality health care. Many times our, our minimum wage jobs don't have any benefits so we can get health care. Uh, we don't have food stores. We live in food deserts. We got high sodium content products and everything. Very little uh, exercise activity. Um, we are more sedentary lifestyles. Um, obesity, more, uh, more, morbidity, morbid obesity. Um, running rampant, diabetes, heart problems, undiagnosed, and that's why COVID is killing us more than anybody else. And that is a systemic racism issue. And we got a president that dismantled is that is has dismantled just about everything that Barack Obama put in place in order to help people as far as their health care that would have strengthened us. He's dismantling it. Yeah, yeah. He ain't as crazy as you think for a white supremacist. I said it. It's tight, but it's right. So once again, um, I am who I am, and that's all that I am, to quote Popeye. And for those that might object to my choices, to you be your way and to me be mine. I'll still love you and I'll still respect you. And I just ask for the same thing in return. This, that's how we as a people will move forward. Because we have differing ideas and different opinions, that doesn't make us enemies. That no, makes us different. And for me to stand next to you doesn't mean that I have to believe or think the way that you do. 
And if I don't, it doesn't mean that I'm your enemy. It means that I'm different. And different is okay. Different is okay. It's not any problem. You know why? There's a lot of folks out here got them titles in front of their names and religious titles, and they don't get this. It's okay because God made us that way. He made us different. He didn't make us robots that'll follow behind him or robots that'll find, follow behind each other. He didn't create us as blind sheep. He created us as independent thinking individuals who are fully capable of making up our decisions for ourselves and who are fully capable of, be, of knowing when we are being duped, when there's a scam being run. But he's also giving us the ability because he won't intrude in our affairs to make wrong choices too. Look at the emperor's new clothes. The emperor thought he was dressed up, was butt naked, ain't have a stitch on. And the only one to call him out was a little kid. Now look up the story, the emperor's new clothes, okay? Well, listen, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. It's almost 934, been at this for over an hour. Um, maybe I can start this back up again. I guess maybe. I don't know. It might work. I don't know. Let's see if it'll work. I'm going to play this um, uh, if, it'll, if it'll play. Um, this is the new release once again. I'm going to post a link up on, uh, on my page. Okay, y'all, check it out, okay, and leave some, uh, leave some, uh, some words, you know, some words, some comments or whatever, okay? Like I say, I'm just on the last end of it, but it's a, it's a great message about surviving cancer, okay? Y'all take care. No matter what goes on or whatever, no matter who you may be, no matter how we may have buried in thought, uh, words and action. I'm going to tell you one thing that I believe and I, and I hold fast to it. I love you all and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. God bless. Take care. Peace. I'm going to let this roll, though. All right? talking about cancer cancer survivors
We've been castrated, emasculated, undereducated, over-incarcerated, and hated for no reason. And we survived. So what say ye about other systems? We as a people cannot afford to focus only on surviving cancer. We must also focus on surviving an entire health care system that has failed us. An educational system that has failed our children. A police system and a prison system that targets black and brown people. And an economic system that has robbed us for 400 years ever since our ancestors were forcibly taken from the motherland. No matter what the challenge, no matter how cruel the treatment or how hard the fight, we not only have survived, we will survive. You are the survivor. Yep. You are the survivor. I love y'all. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Take care. Peace.